Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Friday, March the 24th. I'm Rafi Boyajian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be taking a look at what's happening in the currency markets today. So it's another relatively quiet day. Uh, much of the focus remains on the US dollar uh, as markets anxiously wait uh, the healthcare vote in uh, in the US Congress. Um, the vote was due to take place yesterday, but it was delayed as the Republican Party uh, was struggling to reach to an agreement uh, as to the fi the the final terms uh, of the legislation. Uh, so uh, a lot depends on that um, because uh, if the bill fails to pass through, it would be seen uh, as a potential sign that the Trump administration uh, will struggle to uh, pass uh, other le legislation, particularly on economic policy. Um, but the fact that the, the bill got delayed rather than cancelled uh, helped market sentiment uh, this morning uh, and that led to uh, a drop back for the yen uh, given its recent strikes over the past uh, two or three days. Uh, we also had some dovish remarks from Bank of Japan Governor Ariko Kuroda that also weighed on the Japanese currency. Uh, European currencies are doing much better. The euro and the pound uh, are holding uh, nicely near their multi-week highs. Uh, boosted in part by strong data, uh, but commodity currencies such as the Aussie and the Kiwi uh, are not doing as well. Uh, but let's take a closer look at the that the the Healthcare Act uh, bill, uh, which is due to um, where has the the House of Representatives will vote on it, uh, most likely around uh, between uh, 18 hours or 20 hours GMT. Uh, it got cancelled yesterday because uh, th the Trump administration failed to get enough votes by the Republicans uh, to make sure that the bill would get passed. So there were ongoing negotiations to try to reach to some sort of a compromise. Uh, a lot depends on this because uh, this is the first major legislation uh, by the Trump administration. If it fails to get through, it would possibly mean that uh, the, the future policies, future legislation on tax reforms, uh, infrastructure spending, and so on, uh, that the, they might struggle to uh, get through uh, Congress. Uh, so uh, if the bill does get voted on, it would be positive for the dollar. Uh, there's, there was also some other ex additional uncertainty from a Reuters report which said that the Trump administration uh, is apparently uh, re-examining 14 existing free trade agreements um, and that could be a sign that um, the Trump administration is planning on renegotiating many of those free trade policies uh, to improve the um, uh, the debt benefits for the U.S. side in those particular free trade agreements, as we know, the Trump, Donald Trump, uh, feels very strongly about uh, giving, uh, having U.S. companies giving them a fairer say, uh, as he feels they are disadvantaged. Uh, because of those free trade agreements. Uh, but looking at the dollar-yen pair, um, yesterday it touched a fresh four-month low of 110.62. Uh, it's since recovered back above the 111 uh, level. Um, so if we do get that uh, bill uh, getting approved later today, it would probably lead to further gains uh, for the dollar. Uh, we did have more Fed speakers. Uh, we had uh, Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan, who had already spoken recently, he reiterated his um, view that j just three rate hacks will be needed in total in 2017. Uh, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari, he actually was the the only dissenter in the March FOMC meeting. Uh, well, he pretty much struck, remained to his dovish tone, saying that uh, the Fed should not be raising rates before publishing plans on reducing the balance sheet. The balance sheet is, is of course, uh, is, is re referring to um, the, the the Fed's purchase, uh, the, the Fed's holdings of uh, government uh, bonds following quantitative easing after the financial crisis. Um, and uh, f focusing on the yen now, uh, we can see that the yen has strengthened um, 
has been strengthening in recent days here we can see against the uh, the euro and the pound uh, which have both been falling against the yen uh, apart from the what's happening with the healthcare uh, vote in the US we also had additional uncertainty from the European elections and then of course the the terrorist uh, incidents in London uh, and the one that was um, stopped by police in Belgium uh, as well. So all of that did lead to a bit of anxiety in the markets, uh, which the yen uh, benefited from. Uh, this morning we had flash manufacturing PMI out of Japan. Uh, it fell actually in March from February, though it was it remained above the 50 expansion uh, level for a seventh consecutive month, showing that uh, the Japanese economy is maintaining um, momentum. Uh, the governor of the Bank of Japan, Haruko Kuro, um try to um ease fears that the Bank of Japan may be ending its uh, cont its ultra loose monetary policy so there's no reason to reduce uh, monetary accommodation in light of current economic and price developments uh, given that inflation is still uh, quite a distant away from the two percent uh, target in European currencies uh, we can see that both the euro and the pound have been moving up um, since early March, uh, we had uh, stronger than expected PMI data out of the Eurozone from for out of France and Germany. Uh, the Euro-wide figures are due out shortly. Um, we also had a, an ECB survey yesterday, which uh, which was uh, which gave an optimistic view of the Eurozone economy. The ECB in, in the report said surveys point to robust growth momentum in the first quarter of 2017. Um, that does add to expectations that the ECB may start to raise rates. Um, specifically its deposit rate later this year, even before uh, its bond purchases have come to an end. Although for now, the ECB seems to be denying this. Its chief economist, Peter Pride, said uh, that such an exit from QE uh, would be uh, premature. Um, although he was referring to QE here and not specifically about interest rates. Uh, the pound is also doing well. Uh, or let me just mention that the euro is back about the 1.08 level and the, the pound though is uh, hovering around the 1.25 level yesterday we had stronger than expected retail sales figures for february uh, retail sales had been falling towards the end of 2016 and in january there was a big drop as well uh, that seems to have rebounded in February, uh, and that bodes well for uh, UK growth, given that UK growth is reliant on consumer spending. Uh, and similarly to the ECB, there's been talk about the Bank of England also raising rates sooner than later. Uh, although the, an MPC member um, did try to talk down uh, such rumors saying that inflation rise doesn't necessarily mean uh, higher interest rates, um, but for now the pound um, is sustaining to its uh, recent gains. Uh, and a quick look at commodity currencies, the Aussie and the Kiwi. Um, they, they had risen on the back of the weaker dollar, but they've since been drifting lower over the past week. The Oz, uh, both currencies, the Australian and the New Zealand dollars, they're currently at uh, one-week lows. Uh, the Aussie in particular has been hit by uh, a sharp drop in iron, iron ore prices this week, given that Australia exports iron ore mainly to China. Uh, there's been some signs that there's been weakening demand uh, from China. Uh, and for the key, we, uh, we had the RBNZ meeting this week which maintain its neutral outlook uh, and dairy prices have been weaker recently as well so that may be uh, weighing on the Kiwi although uh, the main immediate impact is the elevated risk aversion in the markets given everything that's happening um, uh, elsewhere in the world particularly uh, with the, the uncertainty regarding uh, the Trump administration or Donald Trump's presidency uh, even though we did have a bit of a higher risk appetite this morning uh, overall um, markets seem to be weighed a little bit by still uh, by uh, the risk off uh, and now finally at today's economic calendar we ha can see that we had the eurozone pmi data uh, which all beat estimates later on we've got durable goods out of the us canadian inflation numbers and we're also going to have flash pmis for manufacturing out of the us and uh, fed speaker uh, scheduled for today is the chicago fed president charles evans that's it for me thank you very much for watching and have a great day